Technology is developing at an accelerated pace. It took the telephone 64 years after its introduction to reach a 40% market share, market acceptance rate. But it took the smartphone just 10 years to reach that same goal. Just 10 years ago, people looked for information in real books instead of looking on Wikipedia. Gmail, Facebook, Twitter didn't exist. Just four years ago, the iPad didn't exist. And BlackBerry and Nokia were the top providers of smartphones in the world. Now, there were more inventions in the last 13 years than there were in the 30 years before that. And there were more inventions in that 30-year period than the 100 years before that. So what does this rapid acceleration of technology mean? Well, Ray Kurzweil, one of the leading innovators and technology thinkers of our generation, believes that this technology acceleration is going to lead to what he calls a singularity. And what he means by that is that technology is going to advance so rapidly that humankind is going to be unable to keep up with, with the advancement to even comprehend how technology is advancing in, in, in that way. And hand in hand with the acceleration is going to be the integration of man with machine, the incorporation of technology in the human body to improve our health, to augment our cognitive abilities, to, it, to enhance our physical capabilities. Now that seems pretty far out there. But today, people can take a pill that wirelessly transmits information to a patch on their skin which relays that information to an iPhone app so you can monitor the progress of that medicine and the biological response to it. Today, people can control a robotic arm just by thinking using current brain sensor technology. And just last year, a man with one leg climbed 103 stories of the Willis Sears Tower using a mind-controlled bionic leg. So where is technology going to be in the next, say, 20 years? or 10, or even five? How can we tell where technology is progressing? Well, there's a convergence of thought among people in uh, to the technology space, confirmed by the Consumer Electronics Show just last week in Vegas, that wearable computers is the next wave in technology. And probably the most famous example right now of wearable computers is Google Glass. Now, Google Glass is just the beginning of this wave of technology that's going to happen in wearable computing. It's just giving us a sense of what's to come in the same way that pagers were just the beginning of mobile communication, a wave that really swept the world that's used now by everyone today in all societies. And Google Glass is going to do the same thing. It's going to evolve and be embraced by people and be used by everyone around the world. And I think if there's any group of people who can understand how remarkable people can adapt to microelectronic computing that you wear all day long to enhance your lives, it's this group right here. Because you've been fitting these on people your whole careers. And hearing aids are the first wearable computers that have been accepted by the public today. They're small microcomputers that you wear in your body that integrate with perception, that enhance people's lives, all characteristics of what wearable computers are. And in the same way that Google Glass is just a glimpse of what's going to happen in visual mobile, visual wearable computers, the made for iPhone hearing aid technology that's introduced this year is just a glimpse of what's going to happen in the audio wearable computer world. Now you're going to be hearing more about made for iPhone hearing aid technology later today. Now I want to talk about what's going to happen in the future with that technology. And we can, we can try to figure out where that's heading by looking at what researchers are doing in visual wearable computers today. And they're focused on developing technology in three areas. In augmented reality, in diminished reality, and in mediated reality. Now augmented reality is the enhancement of perception in some way. In the example here, just by looking at a certain part of the city of London, the visual wearable computer will tell you where the nearest tube stations are and how far away they are. Diminished reality, however, is the exact opposite. It's the, it's the taking away of irrelevant information so that you can focus on what it is you need to pay attention to. So an example of this might be if you're in a crowded room and you're trying to find someone, your visual wearable computer will remove the images of everyone else except for the person that you're looking for. 
and mediated reality is the addition of information that provides some value in some way. In this case, this woman is wearing a system that exists today that allows her to sculpt a vase that only she can see. And when she's done, she can download that data onto a 3D computer, 3D printer, and print out the vase that she created in this virtual world. So all three of these areas are going to be areas where we see development in audio wearable computers. But you know, they already exist in hearing aids today. Augmented reality is, is really just multi-band compression by augmenting the audibility of sound for people with hearing loss. Diminished reality exists in noise reduction in directional microphones, in reducing the loudness of sounds that people want, don't want to hear so they can focus on what they do want to hear. And mediated reality exists in adding information that people want that give people uh, additional information, such as voice alerts, low battery warnings, things like that. But these are simple, simple instances of these technologies that we've been able to in introduce into hearing aids. By integrating hearing aids with iPhone technology, we're going to be able to advance these far beyond what we can imagine today over the next decade. So now, how is, how is Starkey going to ensure that we continue to develop this technology over the next decade? so that we continue to provide value for patients, that we continue to improve their lives. Well, a lot of people are concerned that if we, if we do this, if we integrate iPhone technology with hearing aids, there's going to be some problems. They have concerns about how iPhones affect people and how iPhones affect society. Now, there was a recent study by Stanford University that showed that 75% of iPhone owners fall asleep in bed with their iPhones with them. And that's only 2% less than the number of people who report going to bed with their spouse. <laughs> so I'm not sure that iPhones are affecting marriages. Could be. But I do know that iPhones can affect technology, they can affect products, and they can affect whole industries. Just a couple years ago, there was a $300 product that you could buy. It was developed for the blind. And it was designed to tell them what denomination dollar bill that they had in their hand. So a blind person can tell, do I have a $20 bill? or $5 bill. Well, that product doesn't exist anymore. It's been replaced by a 99 cent app. And people have asked me, is the same thing going to happen to hearing aids? Is an app on an iPhone going to replace hearing aids in the future? Well, to answer that question, you can ask, you can ask yourself these questions. Can you wear an iPhone all day long? Is it discreet? Is it comfortable? Does it have the sound fidelity necessary for someone with sensory and oral hearing loss? Can it improve speech understanding and noise and reduce the sounds that people don't want to hear? Can you imagine one of your patients walking around all day holding their iPhone out in front of them, pointed at the sounds that they want to hear so that the iPhone microphone can pick up that sound, amplify it, transmit it to their earpiece so that they can hear the sound? Well, guess what? That technology existed decades ago. It was called a body aid. And iPhone and, and, and hearing aids have developed far beyond iPhones. So no, iPhones are not going to replace hearing aids, but they're going to enhance them. By integrating iPhone technology with hearing aid technology, we're going to be able to go beyond anything that we've been able to do just with hearing aid technology alone. And it's that integration of the two that's really going to produce astounding things. And the way that we're going to continue to develop this technology, technology to ensure that we provide benefit for patients is by understanding the unmet needs of your patients. And the way that we, that one of the ways that we're going to do this is with design thinking. Now, design thinking is the human-centered approach to data gathering and understanding the, the unarticulated needs of patients. It uses observations of people in their natural environment, in their home, at work, at the gym, when they're out for a walk, and it identifies problems that they're having, and it helps create solutions to those problems to help them and to improve their lives. And probably, one of the, uh, probably one of the best successes of the application of design thinking in recent times is a company called Nest, which, by the way, was just acquired by Google three days ago for $3.2 billion. So it tells you a little bit about the value of the application of design thinking. Now, Nest was founded by Tony Fidel. He's a former executive of Apple, the inventor of the iPod, and he led the development of the first three generations of the iPhone. And what Nest is doing is revolutionizing 
mundane home products, like the thermostat, the smoke alarm. And they've done this by applying design thinking to understand the unmet needs of people who use these products, pretty much everyone who owns a phone, and to identify creative applications of integrating the iPhone with these products. Now, now Fidel's philosophy for revolutionizing products is to think of that product as an iPhone. So he calls the Nest thermostat an iPhone as a thermostat. When he's thinking about how to improve the smoke alarm system, he asks himself, what is the iPhone as a smoke alarm? Not to have the iPhone replace these products, but to have the iPhone integrate with these products so that it can enhance your capabilities, provide new value for the users. So what is the iPhone as a hearing aid? Not to have the iPhone replace hearing aids, but to have the iPhone integrate with them and provide benefit and value that hasn't existed in our industry today. That is the question that we're going to be facing over, this, over the next several years. What is the iPhone as a hearing aid? And the answer to that question is going to be the future. Now, I'm not sure if Ray Kurzweil's singularity will ever exist. And if it does, I don't think it's going to happen in our lifetime. But I do think that our, I do think that our industry is going to change. I think our technology, our business, and our patients are going to change over the next several years. Now, it's difficult to predict how, but here's a vision. The traditional patient will always be with us. That 70-plus-year-old retiree who isn't tech savvy, who likes to talk about their grandkids during office visits, who needs counseling, who needs rehabilitation for their hearing loss, they're always going to be here. In fact, the size of that group is going to grow over the years as the average life expectancy improves with uh, improvements to medicine. But a new patient group is going to appear. In the same way that Google Glass is going to evolve to be accepted and provide benefit for everyone in the world, made for iPhone hearing aid technology is going to evolve as well in the same way. And the benefits that that technology provide will be useful for everyone, not just people with hearing loss. People with normal hearing are going to want that technology. And when that happens, the new patient group is going to emerge. That, that elusive, underserved patient group, the 50-something professionals with mild hearing loss who don't want hearing aids, they're going to become clients. Not because they're looking for a hearing aid, but because they want that amazing technology that everyone else is wearing, and by the way, happens to help them with this speech understanding problem they're just starting to experience. And if you want to provide a solution for this group, you're going to have to change. Because they're going to demand a different approach to sales. They're going to demand a different fitting approach. But they're going to be here, and they're going to be large in number. They're going to be demanding their audio wearable computer. They're going to be demanding all the benefits that the made for iPhone technology is going to develop over the next decade. So the future, ultimately, is really about the emergence of this new group. That's what's important. And the question that you can ask yourself is, are you going to continue to serve the traditional group, traditional patient only, or are you going to change with the future and provide a solution not just for that traditional patient group, but also for this new emerging group as well? And that future is predictable, because that future is in your hands. Thank you.